welcome to module 2 lecture 13. In the previous class we introduced ourselves to Perimbulti and C page and we discussed about the uh, quicksand condition and then we said that the quicksand condition is not a type of sand, it is a condition which actually happens when the water flows vertically upward in soil in some certain situations. So, this lecture is uh, titled as Perimbulti and seepage 2. So, what we discussed in the previous lecture is about the quicksand condition. Uh, in the final uh, leg of the lecture, we discussed about quicksand condition and uh, we said that the quicksand is, a night, is not a type of sand, but a flow condition occurring within a cohesionless soil when its effective stress is reduced to 0 due to upward flow of water. Quicksand condition is not a type of sand, but a flow condition occurring within, within a cohesionless soil when its effective stress is reduced to 0 due to upward flow of water. So, quicksand condition occurs in nature when water is being forced upward under pressurized conditions. So, why does quick condition or boiling occurs mostly in fine sands or sills because of their low binding tendency. Uh, some practical examples also we discuss, they are excavations in uh, granular materials behind the coffer dams along the alongside rivers. Any place where artesian pressures exist, that is where uh, head of water is greater than the, the hydrostatic uh, water pressure or when a previous underground structure is continuous and connected to a place where the head is higher or behind the uh, river embankments that is levees uh, which are actually constructed to protect uh, uh, floods. In reality, uh, contrary to the popular belief, it is not possible to drown in quicksand. The reason is the density of the quicksand which is nothing but uh, a mixture of uh, water and sand particles is much greater than that of water. Consequently, it is literally impossible for a person to be sucked into quicksand and disappear. So, a person walking into uh, quicksand would sink to about waist depth than the then float. Okay. Let us uh, um, based on the discussion whatever we have made, let us uh, consider this example uh, on the boiling condition. In this uh, problem, the sand layer of the soil profile is shown in the uh, figure here, which is under artesian conditions. That means that we have got a, a stiff clay layer here and a sand layer and a rock uh, strata here. And this particular sand layer is uh, subjected to uh, some artesian pressure that means that this particular sand layer has actually has got a, a continuous source of water where it can actually maintain a head of water which is equivalent to 5 meters. That means that when you, men, when you measure the pressure here, the head of the water is actually measured as 5 meters. Now, in that situation, if you would like to you know uh, dig a trench here, a trench is to be excavated in the clay up to a depth of 4 meters then we need to find out what will be the depth of uh, water h to avoid boiling. That means, the sand layer of the soil profile is shown and basically it is a stiff clay, uh, which is actually having a unit weight of 18 kilo Newton per meter cube. And uh, the depth of the trench which actually has been made as 4 meters, suppose here determine the depth of the water h to avoid boiling. So, this uh, can be solved like this, uh, we are interested in this point P. So, at point P, the stress at this point is nothing but gamma H w that is whatever the resulting OR burden which we are going to put into 6 minus 4 that is 2 into gamma clay that is the silty clay which is nothing but H gamma w plus 2 clay. And at P, the water pressure is 5 into gamma W. So, 
at P the effective stress is nothing but gamma w uh, h plus 2 gamma clay minus phi gamma w. For sigma dash is equal to 0 for boiling condition to occur here, if you uh, apply this one, what we get is that h is equal to 1.33 meters. So, if you are able to maintain the height of water uh, which is in the fill, say uh, at least 1.3 meters minimum, then uh, we can actually avoid uh, boiling condition. That means that for example, say by mistake the excavation has actually happened and uh, there is a uh, anticipation of uh, some uh, boiling condition. So, the one of the immediate remedy is to fill the trench with water to provide to prevent the caving of the excavation. Now, we actually have discussed that when the water flows from higher energy higher head to the lower head, it exerts an energy on soil particles in the process of flowing from higher head to the lower head. So, that these particular forces which are actually exerted on soil particles are called as seepage forces. So, water flowing past a soil particle exerts a drag force on the particle uh, in the direction of the flow. For example, here if you consider a stem which is actually having a head h and this is the water level and if this is the length of the sample then water flows vertically upwards in this direction. If you consider an equilibrium of a, uh, a soil particle here the weight of the particle is acting downwards, binant force acting upwards, the drag forces act in the direction of the flow, the drag forces surrounding the uh, particle they act in the direction of the uh, flow. So, this is the direction of the flow which is upward in this case. So, the drag force is caused by the pressure gradient and by viscous drag which is actually occurred because of the uh, water solid interaction and also the uh, head pressure gradient which is actually maintained here. Now, further if you look into the equilibrium of a an element having a cross section area A in the direction of the flow the FBD of the soil is that the weight of the soil mass is W and uh, the pressure which is actually exerted by the water is actually acting at the base here. So, this is the free body of the a soil particles or a particle or a grain which is actually shown here. At critical condition H tends to become HC, at critical condition H tends to become HC. So, it is nothing but GS plus E uh, by 1 plus E gamma w into A l, G s plus e by 1 plus e into gamma w into A l. So, uh, this is nothing but the saturated unit weight acting over area A and length of the sample l that is the weight and uh, uh, based on the, uh, the pressure here h c plus l into A into gamma w which is nothing but the, uh, the upward pressure is actually acting at this point. So, by simplification what we get is that I c is equal to h c by l is equal to g s minus 1 by 1 plus e. So, g s minus 1 means g s is nothing but the specific gravity of the uh, solid particles and e is the void ratio of the soil matrix. So, the critical gradient i c is equal to g s minus 1 by 1 plus e. And considering the free body diagram of the grain in the direction of the flow at i is equal to i c. So, with this uh, once we if you if you simplify this we will be able to calculate what is the CPS pressure CPS force acting in a given volume where the flow is actually occurring. And uh, if you are able to uh, uh, you know take the CPS force per unit well volume uh, of the fluid phase where the flow is occurring you will be able to get the CPS pressure. The CPS pressure which is nothing but the CPS force per unit volume the units of the CPS uh, pressure are nothing but uh, kilo Newton per meter cube. So, now the free body diagram of the grain once we consider the weight of the dry soil particle is equal to frictional uh, uh, drag force acting on the, uh, on the soil grain in the direction of the flow plus the bionic force. So, frictional drag uh, on the acting on the soil particle can be obtained by W d that weight of the soil particle minus b. Weight of the soil particle can be obtained by dry unit weight of the soil particle that is g s gamma w by 1 plus e into a into l minus b is nothing but the uh, volume of the solid into gamma w. So, this we can write it as 
f s c as g s gamma w by 1 plus e into a l minus v minus v v by v into v gamma w. So, the what we have done is that v s what we have replaced by v minus v v by v into v gamma w. So, factor of uh, this uh, uh, frictional force uh, that is nothing but the applied on the solid particles is nothing but g s gamma w by 1 plus e into a l minus 1 minus n into a l into gamma w. So, this is upon simplification what we get is that uh, f s c that is the C phase force acting or applied on the solid particles is equal to g s minus 1 by 1 plus e into gamma w into v. So, this uh, when we, once we write it as uh, at i is equal to i c uh, it can be written as uh, f s c that is the frictional force which is actually applied in the direction of the uh, flow as i c gamma w where i c is equal to h c by l uh, which is nothing but g s minus 1 by 1 plus e uh, into gamma w into v. V is the volume over which the fluid uh, flow is actually occurring with a higher head to the lower head. So, if h is actually say less than h c where the critical head is not at reached then the C phase force j s is nothing but i gamma w v. So, when the when h tends to become h c that means that when the h tends to become the critical head which actually can uh, make the effective stress equivalent to 0 in that situation the C phase pressure uh, is given as i c gamma w. In case the when h is less than h c when i is less than i c the C phase pressure is given as P s is equal to i gamma w. Both the C phase force and C phase pressure act in the direction of the flow. The C phase force can also be obtained by this particular uh, you know deduction. Uh, for this uh, to happen uh, consider a rectangular element let us assume that this element is actually having uh, uh, dimensions uh, in two dimensions like delta L in this direction and delta L in this direction and assume that this is the direction of the flow because here the pressure head maintained is H1 and here the pressure head is maintained H2 then the uh, assuming that the H1 is greater than H2 the total head uh, the difference is nothing but delta H which is actually happening over a length L. That means that the uh, head available here is uh, uh, H1 minus H2 that is delta H by the time actually the uh, water, uh, water flows or erupts out of this particular point it is uh, having a uh, head, head, uh, head available that is the head loss which actually happens is almost complete 100 percent that is delta H is equal to 0 here and delta H is equal to uh, full head will be here. So, uh, area per unit width of the section is nothing but delta L into 1 if you consider if we, if we consider the width the, the unit width perpendicular to the flow direction means that 1 meter here 1 units here then the area uh, over which the flow is actually happening is delta L into 1 and volume affected by the C phase force is nothing but delta L into delta L into 1. So, delta L square into 1 is the uh, you know the volume of the uh, fluid phase. Now, uh, by uh, writing expression for force applied to sand particles as a difference of uh, force applied on the left hand side here and the right hand side here from here to here there is a drop which is actually occurring and this is uh, this is the direction of the flow and this is uh, called as uh, this distance between these two points is called as the flow channel. So, the force applied here is nothing but gamma w h 1 into delta L into 1 force applied here is gamma w h 2 into delta into 1 as h 1 is greater than h 2 gamma h 1 minus gamma h 2 into delta L into delta 1. So, here there will be a bracket uh, which is uh, here. So, with this what we can write is that the force applied to sand particles is nothing but gamma w into delta h into delta L into 1. Now, by writing uh, gamma w uh, into delta h by delta l into del square into del, uh, delta l square 1 we can write delta l square 1 as the volume and delta h by delta l is nothing but the uh, the hydraulic gradient. So, with that I can write i gamma w v. So, this is nothing but the C phase force um, which is i gamma w v i is the uh, hydraulic gradient which is nothing but here the definition is that delta h by delta l because delta h is the uh, 
drop between the points left hand section and right hand section which is shown in the previous slide and uh, gamma w into v, v is nothing but the volume of the fluid phase which is nothing but delta L into delta L uh, into 1. C phase pressure is can be given by C phase uh, uh, force per uh, so C phase force per unit volume which is nothing but I gamma w. So, the critical hydraulic gradient and quick condition, the quick condition occurs at a critical uh, upward gradient I c when the C phase force just balances the bionic weight of the soil uh, and the shear stresses on the sides of the element are neglected. So, here the shear stresses on the sides of the elements are neglected. So, the critical hydro, hydraulic gradient is uh, typically around 1 for many soils. Fluidized beds in chemical engineering systems rely on the deliberate generation of quick condition to ensure that the chemical process can occur efficiently. So, in some cases uh, where uh, fluidized beds um, uh, in order to generate the, chemi uh, uh, chemi uh, the chemical processes, the quick conditions are deliberately generated so that uh, you know this actually serves for the purpose. So, the critical hydraulic gradient is typically around 1. And uh, in considering these deliberations, what we have what, what we have neglected is that shear stresses on the sides of the element are neglected. So let us consider uh, another example problem. The problem is described like this here. We need to determine and plot the total stress, pore water pressure, and effective stress diagram, uh, or we need to plot if in case one h is equal to one meter case 2 h is equal to 4 meters and h is equal to 2 meters. So, this is uh, the h which is actually shown here the difference in water level between the this portion of the stem to the this level at a small a. So, this particular portion of the stem actually has got a, a cross section area a and uh, having a soil thickness of 2 meters and this is the this c point is at the midpoint mid distance uh, above, above d and this level is actually considered as a datum. The saturated unit weight of the uh, sand particles is given as 20 kilo Newton per meter cube. So, this level is C, D, B and A. So, in case 1 the hydraulic gradient is nothing but the length of the soil sample is 2 meters. So, I is nothing but H by 2. So, here uh, when the H is equal to 1 meter it is 0.5 and H is equal to uh, uh, 4 meters it is 4 by 2 that is 2 and case 3 i is equal to 1. So, in one case i is equivalent to i c another case is i, I greater than i c another case i less than i c. So, in the three conditions based on the three conditions uh, now in the case 1 i is equal to 0 0.5 in uh, all the three cases which is actually shown here because this h is actually greater than this the water actually flows in vertically direct, vertically upward direction. So, the flow occurs in, uh, in the vertically upward direction. So, this is the datum and this d is at the small d is at the this at the datum level and c is at the midpoint and b uh, is at the top surface top of this uh, soil surface and a is the top of the uh, water surface. So, at point a that is at the top of the water surface on the right hand side stem the pressure head is uh, 0 and the elevation head is 4 meters because it is 4 meters above the uh, assumed datum. So, total head is 4 meters. At point B the pressure head is uh, 2 meters, elevation head is 2 meters, total head is nothing but pressure head plus elevation head which is nothing but the 4 meters. At point D pressure head is 5 meters and elevation head is 0 because it is on datum. So, the total head is 5 meters. At point C, here what actually happened is that 50 percent of the head which is actually available is actually already dissipated. So, uh, the pressure head is now is 3.5 meters, elevation head is nothing but 1 meter because it is 1 meter above the assumed datum. So, total head available is 4.5 meters. So, with this uh, when we plot this uh, diagram uh, with the D, C, B at these points and A at this point the total stress can be given like this. The total stress diagram in units of kilo Newton per meter square can be plotted as 20, 40 and 60. So, at this point actually it is 20, 40 and 60 and pore water pressure uh, with the uh, whatever the uh, 
uh, total heads we have derived, we can actually say it is 20, 35 and 50 kilo Pascals. So, or kilo Pascals or kilo Newton per meter square. So, in this case here it is nothing but um, uh, the effective stress which is nothing but sigma minus u, we can say that which is still it is actually having a 10 kilo Pascals uh, uh, effective stress at the base and 5 kilo Pascals or 5 kilo Newton per meter square at the mid height and here it is 0. So, this is for a case of i is equal to 0.5. In the second case what we discussed is that head is equal to 4 meters which becomes i is equal to uh, 2 uh, with that uh, we can actually say the point A now is again pressure head is 0, elevation head is 4 meters total head is 4 meters and point B pressure head is 2 meters, elevation head is uh, 2 meters, total head is 4 meters and point D pressure head is 8 meters, elevation head is uh, uh, here it is 0 uh, because it is on the datum and the total head is uh, uh, 8 meters and uh, point C where pressure head is 5 meters, elevation head is 1 meter, total head is 6 meters. So, here when you plot the diagram based on the uh, head which is actually available, we can write the total stress as like this which is uh, same and then here in this case the because of the change in the head conditions here because it is 4 meters, it actually gives 20, 50 and 80 kilo Pascals or kilo Newton meter square. So, this indicates that when you take sigma minus u, the, this indicates that all the pressures are actually negative that means that quicksand condition would have already occurred because the head is uh, so high the quick and quicksand condition would have already occurred. In the third case where i is equal to 1 is maintained with that case uh, uh, you know the point at A the pressure head is 0, elevation head is 4 meters and total head is 4 meters and point B pressure head is uh, 2 meters, elevation head is 2 meters, total head is 4 meters. At point D now because of 2 meters head which is actually maintained h is equal to 2 meters with that i is equal to 1 is maintained for that with elevation head is equal to 0 the total head is 6 meters and point C which is pressure head is 4 meters, elevation head is 1 meter and total head is 5 meters. With this uh, we can actually write for the case uh, 3 as uh, at this point the tau sigma total stress is same but pore water pressure u which is nothing but 20, 40, 60 when we take a uh, subtraction of sigma minus u at all points you can say that it indicates 0. That means that this is when i uh, when a head of 2 meters is uh, it is subjected when you neglect all the frictional forces it can be said that this is just subjected to a quicksand condition just subjected to a quicksand condition. Another example problem which is uh, relevant to the field conditions, uh, here a large open excavation was made in a stratum of clay with a saturated uh, unit weight of 17.6 kN per meter cube. When the depth of the excavation reached 7.5 meter, the bottom rose up that means that the heaving of the bottom has taken place and gradually cracked and flooded uh, from water by mixer of sand and water. So, subsequent boring showed that the clay was underlined by a bed of sand with its surface at a depth of 11 meters. So, compute the elevation for which the water would have risen from the sand surface into the drill hole before the excavation was started. So, we need to calculate elevation for which the water would have risen from the sand surface into a drill hole before the excavation started. So, the problem is that 11 meter thick uh, soil underlined by a previous layer and in which the excavation which is actually planned to a depth of 7.5 meters and h is the uh, h is the uh, uh, the uh, the head which is actually may cause uh, uh, might have caused the uh, the heaving so for that uh, to be determined what we need to do is that what we have uh, the way we have done in the previous problem we can calculate here at point a the effective stress and at the it this can actually can lead to the failure when the effective stress at point A is equal to 0. So, uh, we can actually by knowing the saturated unit weight we can actually calculate 17.6 into 11.11 minus 11.5 this is uh, which is available and this particular portion of the soil has been excavated minus 10 into h that is nothing but the uh, 10 is the unit weight of the water which is actually taken as 10 kilo Newton per meter cube gamma into h. 
So, with that we can actually get the answer as h is equal to 6 meters. That means that when the head actually uh, suppose the sand layer here at this point when it is subjected to head of artesian head of 6 meters then there is a possibility of. So, that might this particular uh, head might have actually caused the, the so called uh, uh, heaving of the excavation uh, in that particular problem. Uh, another example problem in this case uh, we have uh, uh, the problem uh, statement is like this determine and plot the total vertical stress pore water and effective vertical stress distribution at levels A, B and C. So, the soil strata which is actually given like this it is 6 meter is silty clay and below that there is a coarse sand. So, A is top, so top of the surface and water table is actually assumed to be at this surface. So, the hydrostatic water surface is actually at this surface and the C which is nothing but the joint uh, interface between silty clay and coarse, coarse sand and the 3 meter is the thickness of the clay layer uh, of the 3 meter is the thickness of the coarse sand layer, coarse sand layer thickness is which is actually having a uh, 3 meters and the specific gravity of the solids is GS is equal to 2.65 and void ratio is 0 0.833 and the silty clay which is actually having GS is equal to 2.7 and natural moisture content of 45.2 percent. And the head of the water which is actually measured here uh, is assumed that uh, it is uh, uh, it, it is 4 meter uh, above this uh, ground water table. So, the, the given problem uh, an artesian uh, pressure exists in the lower sand layer. So, that is what actually what we have uh, uh, understood the artesian pressure uh, 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 prevalence in the uh, lower uh, problem, lower uh, sand layer at A, B and C. And B is uh, C is located 1 meter above the uh, datum. So, in this uh, given problem and this particular uh, uh, surface is assumed as uh, datum. This, uh, this is actually assumed as datum and here uh, this particular point is 1 meter above the uh, datum that is C and A is actually 3 meter above the datum that is at the this point. And then we have uh, here uh, there is uh, sand lay, saturated uh, uh, sand layer and here it is uh, a dry soil layer. And, uh, <coughs> so, here uh, we need to determine sigma u and uh, sigma dash at point A, B and C. In the previous problem this solution need to be uh, worked out uh, based on the given data here. However, this problem solution we can actually look into it. This problem is different from the problem statement which is given in the uh, previous slide. Uh, in this, uh, uh, this is also subjected to artesian uh, pressure, but uh, what exactly happens is that uh, the, uh, the head actually loss occurs uh, from point when the flow actually takes place from point B to point A. So, the total head at A which is nothing but total head at A is nothing but uh, 2 meters of uh, uh, water uh, that is elevation head is 3 meters and pressure head is 2 meters that is 2 meters of that hydrostatic pressure is there. And uh, because of that the total head at uh, point A is uh, three, uh, 5 meters and total head at B which is because uh, here it is subjected to uh, uh, this uh, 3 plus 2 5 plus 1 6 plus 1 7 meters. So, 7 plus this being the datum what we get is the total head at B is equal to uh, 7 meters. So, because of this uh, the delta H which is actually available uh, the head loss here is nothing but 2 meters occurring over a the loss the flow is occurring over a length of 3 meters at C is a point which is actually 1 meter from the uh, datum. So, at point B that is sigma can be obtained as 18.51 to 1 that is the gamma D into 1 meter thickness plus 19 into 2 that is saturated unit weight of the sand layer below the hydrostatic uh, uh, water table plus 17 into 3. So, with that I have got uh, 107.5 kilo Newton per meter square and at point B 
uh, u is equal to 10 into 7, so 70 kilo per meter square. So, sigma dash is nothing but uh, 107.5 minus 70, which is nothing but 37.5 kilo per meter square. And at point A, uh, we can actually obtain uh, uh, the above the that is at point A is at this point. Uh, sigma is nothing but 18.5 into 1 uh, plus 19 into 2, which is equivalent to 56.5 kilo per meter square, and u is equal to 10 into 2, which is 20 kilo per meter square. So, sigma dash is equal to 56.5 minus 20 is nothing but 36.5 kilo Newton per meter square. So, uh, at point A, the effective stress is this much, at point B, the effective stress is this much, almost uh, uh, of the same order, and at point C. Uh, which is in between point A and B, where total stress is given as 90.5 and uh, pore water pressure is given as 10 into pressure head at C. So, here based on the discussion here, the head which is actually available, here the full head is a head, head drop is actually available which can take place is 2 meters and uh, this is the uh, length of the, so hydraulic gradient here is nothing but 2 by 3 meters, that is 2 by 3. 0.67 is the hydraulic grid, the slope of this line. So, here uh, at 50 percent of the clay thickness that is 1.5 meters, uh, we will have uh, the head of only 1 meters, but here because of this, this uh, head which is actually available is 1.33 meters. So, we can actually write the pore water pressure is nothing but 10 into 5.33, which is nothing but 53.33 kilo per meter square. The effective stress is nothing but total stress minus pore water pressure which is nothing but 38.2 kilo per meter square. So, the total head at C is nothing but total head at B minus I into Z which we can write it as 7 minus 2 by 3 is nothing but the hydraulic gradient uh, that is nothing but a 2 meter uh, head loss over a uh, length of the soil layer as 3 meters that is 2 by 3 into Z is equal to 1. So, with that 6.33 meters. The pressure head at uh, uh, C can be obtained like this, total head at C is nothing but uh, uh, 6.33 minus elevation head is 1 meter. So, because of that the pressure head at C what we consider is 5.33 is explained here. So, with this uh, for the given problem what we discussed uh, in the uh, previous slide, the total stress uh, diagram which is actually shown like 56.5 the units are in kilo Newton per meter square, the units are in kilo Newton per meter square, 56.5 kilo per meter square, 90.5 and 107.5 and the water pressure is nothing but 20 and at this point it is 53.3 and 70 and here the effective stress is nothing but 36.5, 38.2 and 37.5, uh, it is having an, a constant effective stress of about uh, 37.5. Uh, average average effective stress of about 38 kilo pascals. So, uh, the uh, measurement of uh, soil permeability is, so we have said that permeability is a property of the soil, uh, where uh, different types of soils exhibit uh, different uh, uh, values and uh, this is actually used for, uh, uh, for different conditions, different applications in uh, civil engineering construction. And uh, it is very, uh, uh, it will be uh, interesting to know how this uh, permeability is actually measured. The permeability can be measured uh, from either from the indirect uh, methods uh, or it can be measured from uh, uh, the laboratory tests or through the field uh, tests. So, the rate of flow of water Q that is volume or uh, time T through a cross section area is found to be proportional to the hydraulic gradient I according to Darcy's law. So, which is nothing but V is equal to Q by A is equal to K i or Q is nothing but the K i A. So, discharge over a cross section area which is nothing but Q is equal to K i A, where i is nothing but the hydraulic gradient over a length L that is nothing i, I is nothing but uh, head loss over a length L, hydraulic gradient is equal to head loss over a length L, where V is the flow velocity and k is the quotient of permeability with the dimensions velocity over length over time. See the quotient of permeability of a soil is a measure of the conductance uh, uh, that is the reciprocal of the resistance that is provided that provides the flow of water through its pores. So, it is a property of the soil 
which actually determines or which actually tells the ease with which the water can flow through the soils. Uh, uh, as that has been mentioned in the uh, in the previous discussion, the value of the value of the coefficient of permeability k depends upon the average size of the pores and is actually related to the particle sizes and their packing. So we actually have said that the pore diameter can be approximated as void ratio times the effective particle size. So if you take uh, effective particle size of a sand and effective particle size of a clay and clay is actually having very low effective particle size with that we can say that the pore diameters of the clay is very very fine compared to a sand. So it is approximated that 20 percent of effective particle size is regarded as uh, pore diameter. So uh, the value of the coefficient of permeability uh, and a prima facie depends on average size of the pores and is related to the particle sizes and their packing and uh, particle shape particularly whether it is angular or whether it is rounded or sub rounded uh, the shape and the soil structure uh, and that, 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 that is nothing but the arrangement of the soil particles whether it is a flocculated or whether it is a dispersed structure or whether it is a bulk structure. Uh, so it depends upon the, uh, the whether it is a loose uh, bulk packing or a dense packing in case of a bulk particles. The ratio of the permeabilities of typical sands and gravels to, the, to that of the uh, clays is to those of the clays is of the order of 1 million times. That means that the ratio of the permeability of the typical sands and gravels uh, to those of uh, typical clays is generally of the order of 10 to the power of 6. A small proportion of the fine material in coarse sand soil can lead to a significant reduction in the permeability. That means that if you are able to add a small proportion of fine grained soil to the coarse grained soil and that can influence the permeability. The number of tests can be used to measure the estimate of the permeability in the prima uh, in, in primarily, uh, primarily in the laboratory uh, the two types of tests which are actually there they are called the constant head test used basically for high permeable soils and the falling head test used basically for relatively impermeable soils. So the constant head test is actually basically used for high permeable soils and falling head test is used basically for relatively impermeable soils. Uh, as uh, it was mentioned earlier, there are indirect methods, some correlations which are actually available based on the grain size distributions that is based on the D5, uh, D, D, D10 and other particle sizes. Basically for uh, sandy soils, some correlations are actually available by knowing the effective particle size, we will be able to uh, estimate the quotient of permeability based on the grain size distribution. Also from the oidometer test or a consolidometer test, uh, when the soil is actually subjected to consolidation in a consolidometer test, uh, indirectly we can actually compute the uh, permeability based on uh, quotient of uh, uh, consolidation and uh, quotient of uh, uh, volume compressibility and the unit weight of the water. And uh, these are the you know possible uh, laboratory methods. In the field, there are methods which are actually possible are called uh, pumping tests and borehole tests, uh, which are popular uh, known as the packers tests, which are actually conducted with uh, single packer or double packer uh, systems. So in determining the permeability of uh, uh, coarse grain soils, particularly the large quantities of flow, flow occurs in short periods of time and a small quantity of flow occur over a long period of time for fine grained soil. So in case of uh, fine grained soils, very small quantity of the flow occurs uh, over a long period of time. In case of a uh, permeability of the coarse grained soils, what will happen is that in a short span of time, a large quantity of flow takes place. So two aspects that need to be careful attention uh, for all types of soils are that to ensure that flow occurs only through the soil not at the interface between the soil and the mould in which the soil is contained. So in the laboratory while determining uh, the uh, particularly the leakage from the edges required to be arrested that is that to ensure we have to ensure that the flow occurs to the soil not at the interface between the soil and the mould in which the soil is contained and the soil sample is fully saturated before recording observation. So one is that the either the coarse grained soil or uh, fine grained soil the soil sample need to be completely saturated. So for determining permeability of a soil sample by using a, a constant head permeability test. So in the constant head test, uh, this, the setup which is actually shown here 
has got a sample of uh, uh, length L and uh, having uh, some head of water which is actually maintained constant and uh, uh, so uh, here the head of the water which is actually maintained is say H over a length L. So, the hydraulic gradient is nothing but the H by L. So, any additional amount of water which actually uh, flows through this one is actually collected as a discharge here. So, in a given time uh, over the cross section area of the sample perpendicular to the uh, this uh, direction of the flow. So, the direction of the flow is in this direction. So, uh, that is nothing but the A. So, the discharge which is actually connected in a time t is nothing but q is equal to a into v into t and v is nothing but the uh, uh, we can write it as k into h by l into t where k is the coefficient of permeability which is uh, required to be determined. So, by rearrangement of the terms here by measuring the discharge in time t and over a length of the sample a and a is the cross section area and h is the head which is actually maintained. With that we can actually determine uh, coefficient of permeability of the soil uh, through uh, uh, by using constant head test. In the constant head test the uh, one need to est, uh, establish the steady state uh, conditions. After establishing the ensuring the steady state conditions uh, uh, 3 to 4 uh, readings need to be evolved and the average of this uh, readings can be reported as the average permeability. And uh, main features of the constant head test include uh, it is suitable for soils having coefficient of permeability in the range of 10 to the power of minus 2 to 10 to the power of minus 5 meter per second which applies to clean sand and sand gravel mixers with less than 10 percent fines. And it can be suitable for soils when used in their completely disturbed or remolded states such as for drain materials and filters to confirm that their performance will be adequate. So, it can be suitable for soils when used in their completely disturbed molded states such as for drain materials and filters to confirm that their performance will be adequate. Uh, in this particular uh, slide uh, where the setup for the falling head test or variable head test is actually shown and uh, here because at the amount of water which is actually flowing through the soil or entering into the soil is less. So, a stem which is actually having a very small cross section area is actually provided on top and uh, like the constant head test uh, in a given amount of time the head drop from H1 to H2 is actually measured. So, here uh, the cross section area of the standpipe is say A and the cross section of the sample is say A. So, this is actually called as a, a, a rigid wall perimeter at time at time t naught where head at, at head uh, that head is H1 at time t1 the head is actually H2. So, H b let H be the head of the water at any time t and let in time t uh, that d t the head drop by amount d h. So, uh, we can actually write the quantity of water flowing to the sample in time d t from the Darcy's law can be obtained as we can write it as d q is equal to k into i into a into d t. So, which we can write it as uh, k uh, into h by l into a into d t. So, the quantity of the discharge can also be expressed as because uh, in the in a small cross section of pipe when there is a drop of uh, uh, water from h 1 to h 2 when h 1 is greater than h 2 what will happen is that uh, uh, there is uh, uh, the uh, d q is equal to minus a into d h we can write as the time increases the head decreases. So, we can actually write minus a into h 1 to h 2 into d h with that we can actually equate this uh, uh, these two discharges and integrating from t is equal to t naught to t 1 we can uh, by simplifying that we can write it as k is equal to 2.303 a l by a t log to the base 10 h 1 by h 2. So, this is actually expression which is required to be used for a falling head test. The main features of the constant head and falling head test basically include in the constant head test the permeability is computed on the basis of fluid that passes through the soil sample uh, while in the falling head test k is computed on the basis of the fluid flowing into the sample. So, in the case of uh, uh, fine grained soil um, the what we in fact is measured is water entering into the uh, specimen. In case of a constant test is that the permeability is actually computed on the basis that flow flow which is actually occurring through the sample. Uh, so, the main uh, distinct difference 
between a constant heat test and the falling heat test is nothing but in the constant heat test the water flows to the soil in the falling heat test water flows into the soil. Because here in the case of a falling heat test the type of the soil which is actually uh, being discussed or being determined for permeability is uh, fine grained soil which is actually highly influenced by the uh, you know which is actually having uh, a effect of uh, uh, the uh, soil structure and uh, particularly the mineralogy which actually plays a bigger role. So, uh, in the constant test the time required to accumulate the fluid volume necessary to perform computation and uh, basically extreme care would be required to prevent leaks in the apparatus and evaporation of the discharge water. And uh, with the falling head test the duration of the test is actually shortened and care is required to prevent evaporation of water in the inlet tube. See another problem which is actually uh, which we have given uh, uh, discussed in the uh, uh, in the slide which is shown here the problem is again shown here. So, this problem uh, can be treated as an assignment problem where here uh, uh, the soil uh, uh, strata which is actually having 6 meters and uh, the silty clay which is actually having GS is equal to 2.7 and water content is given as 4.45.2 percent and coarse sand which is nothing but GS is equal to 2.65 and E is equal to 0.833. And uh, this particular layer actually has got uh, uh, an artesian uh, uh, condition. So, with that uh, uh, it is uh, uh, the problem uh, statement is actually like determine and plot the total vertical stress pore water pressure and effective vertical stress distribution at levels A uh, and C and B is at a point. Uh, at midpoint of this that is actually uh, at the at this point that is 6 meter is the thickness of the clay layer. So, the silty clay layer. So, B is at a mid, mid distance from the uh, this particular point. So, in this particular uh, lecture what we try to discuss is that uh, we have introduced uh, the uh, you know C phase uh, force how it can be measured as how it can be calculated. One is we said that C phase force J is equal to uh, I gamma W V and the C phase uh, uh, pressure is nothing but uh, uh, C phase force per unit volume which is nothing but uh, I gamma W uh, which is the units of the C phase pressure are kilo Newton per meter cube and which is actually resulted in the direct this C both C phase force and C phase pressure occur in the direction of the flow. Then we have introduced ourselves to a couple of uh, practical problems where when there is a soil status subjected to artesian conditions how we can actually uh, compute these uh, total stresses pore water pressures and effective stresses because of the, the resulting upward flow because of the artesian conditions. And then we have actually discussed uh, uh, the methods for measuring uh, uh, permeability uh, of the soil particularly we have actually have got two methods one is uh, constant head uh, permeability test and foreign head permeability test these are actually widely used for uh, in the laboratory. Uh, in the falling head permeability test there are also one uh, like two distinct uh, uh, apparatus which are actually used one is called rigid wall perimeters other one is uh, flexible wall perimeters. In case of uh, rigid wall perimeters the stresses cannot be applied onto the soil sample, uh, but however in case of uh, uh, flexible wall uh, perimeters the confinement stresses can be applied and then uh, the permeability test can be done. Uh, by using the similar concepts of falling head permeability test. So, with this uh, the effect of the confinement stresses on the, the permeability of the soil uh, being tested can be obtained. And uh, uh, the main uh, distinct difference between a constant head test and a falling head test what we discussed is that in the case of a constant head test the water actually flows uh, through the soil and in case of a falling head test the water actually uh, enters into the soil. And however, uh, uh, what is actually measured is that the, the small amount of change which actually occurs. And we also said that the uh, for a typical sand and clay, the the distinct difference is actually about uh, uh, you know the the permeability of the sand is 10 to the power of 6 times uh, more than the uh, a particular typical clay. That means that uh, a distinctly different permeability is the reason uh, and the factors affecting the uh, permeability of soils and the some field testing methods along with the uh, some testing data uh, we will be discussing in the subsequent lectures.